This episode of Bullet Heaven was made possible with a copy of the game provided by Pixelheart. Games that make the jump from mobile to console often have unmistakable hallmarks. Whether it's a set of oversimplified controls or gameplay mechanics or <coughs> features that very obviously existed behind either an absurd amount of grinding or an outright paywall, it's not at all difficult to sniff out titles that started with a free-to-play, pay-to-win kind of structure. Guns of Mercy is one such title. Developed by Storybird and originally released for Android and iOS in 2017, it would be retooled, revamped, and re-released to the Nintendo Switch as a widescreen, twin-stick, fixed shooter in January of 2019 as Guns of Mercy Rangers Edition. A physical version was then published by Pixelheart in summer of 2020, which is where we're picking up. So how does it fare? Let's take a closer look! In terms of control, Guns of Mercy Rangers Edition is almost too oversimplified. Much like Galaga or Space Invaders, this is a fixed shooting game at its core, so players can only move left or right by way of the D-pad or left analog stick. A limited dash can also be performed by pressing the L button when moving in the desired direction. This is helpful in collecting loot and dodging certain enemy fire patterns, but its duration is very, very short. Meanwhile, there are no control schemes that feature a dedicated fire button. It just happens. Automatically, all the time. Players do, however, have the ability to direct their fire in any direction within a 180 degree arc by way of the right analog stick. We get that players are likely always firing regardless of whether there's a button to do it or not, but it feels sort of cheap and mobile-y. Even if fire was activated only as the right stick is tilted, it would feel more natural and, at the very least, deliberate. The goal of Guns of Mercy is to progress from floor to floor to eliminate a predetermined number of enemies, which can be found at the top of the screen. Starting at just 40 enemies, each subsequent floor will add more to the required total, while adding new enemy types and generally boosting their resilience. But every five stages, players will square off against a large boss after meeting the required kill count for the floor in question. Once it's dealt with, players then continue to the next floor and it's business as usual. If players need a boost in attack power to clear the room in a hurry, they can summon a large mecha suit by clicking in the right analog stick when their fuel gauge reaches 100%. This gauge will fill by way of enemy kills, but can also get a decent boost by collecting jerry cans. Players can see at a glance if the mecha is ready when the flames by their character's portrait turn blue from red. The mecha will lead off with a powerful flamethrower followed up by a steady salvo of powerful twin rapid shots. The mecha can also sustain numerous hits, which will decrease the already depleting fuel more rapidly on impact. At 0%, the mecha is discarded. There are other ways that the game assists the player throughout their run as well. Often, additional weapons and enhancements can be found and picked up with the R button to temporarily change the player's fire type, boost their power, grant a shield, or add additional automated fire to the mix. Picking up multiple weapons of the same type in use will even boost the player's general firepower. With the exception of shields, all of these pickups will last only a limited amount of time. However, players have the option to grab an enhancement, whether it be an extra turret, side-firing options, a shield, or extra power between stages. These will stay in effect for the entirety of the next stage, with the exception once again of shields, which will stay equipped. But they also come at the cost of 5 gems, which is something we'll touch on a little bit later. Because the player's opposition will become stronger versus the player's firepower, there will come a time when the player's shots will become ineffectual to the point that progress will be extremely difficult. Player characters will gain levels on their own, albeit through a grueling grind. That's where the game's shop comes into play. A number of upgrades are available to the player in the forms of new weapons, increased weapon level, new characters and mechas, and upgrades to their levels, etc. Each selectable character will have various base stats including power, critical hit percentage, and more, offering players more or less challenge depending who's chosen. Ultimately though, any one character can bring the pain with purchased enhancements. These purchases require coins and, sometimes, various amounts of gems to accomplish. This is where Guns of Mercy's mobile routes are perhaps the most blatantly obvious. 
As with most free-to-play games, progression is slow and deliberately scaled back. Players who meet their untimely demise can continue at the cost of more and more gems the more they do so in a single run. All of this is structured in the hopes that the impatient will drop a few bucks worth of real-world currency in exchange for extra coins and especially extra gems, which are far more uncommon and much more difficult to obtain. The good news is, despite having more or less the exact same structure as a mobile pay-to-win title, the amount of coinage, and more importantly gems, is rather generous in the console version of Guns of Mercy. And of course, being a title you pay for up front, there are no microtransactions to be seen here. Players will always find square coins of various sizes and value throughout their playtime and a gem here and there for good measure. But there is also a gigantic list of missions to undertake to work towards more money and even gems by fulfilling the requirements. This adds a ridiculous amount of stuff to accomplish for players looking for more to do, though the staying power of the game is already kind of questionable as it is. That's because Guns of Mercy plays over the course of, um, well we're really not sure how many stages. Hundreds as it is marketed, but there's no solid data on just how many there are as of this review. We stopped at 101, because it just kept on trucking with even more new enemy variants. Which is a bit of a shame because the same 8 bosses are cycled over and over again as players make their way through higher, or wait is that lower, stage numbers. They aren't even really altered in any way, not even palette swapped. Paired with the extreme grind of getting more cash and gems to outfit and upgrade the player's characters and weapons, how long anyone will stick with this game can be called into question, especially since the endgame or any kind of completion isn't even in sight after over 100 stages. Thankfully, players can, of course, spend coins to boost the starting floor number to get further faster, and the elevator phase can be skipped by holding the B button to hurry things along. So, as a solo endeavor, Guns of Mercy is competent, but maybe a touch on the boring side. However, Guns of Mercy does have long legs with regards to its multiplayer mode. Up to four players can take the game on at a time, with a semi-competitive result when all players meet their end. The general rules apply to multiplayer as with the main game, with an added function to revive fallen players by holding the R button over their tombstones within a certain amount of time. They can rejoin the game by spending gems between stages if they don't quite make it. So yeah, it's all solid enough from a gameplay standpoint, but what about its scoring? Well, there's not too much to see here, unfortunately. Basically, players just need to shoot and kill everything they see, collect everything else, and they'll get a small boost in pointage at the beginning of each new floor. Every bullet impact and kill counts here, as does the collection of every item, coin, and gem. But given that it's shallower than the condensation left behind by a glass of cold water, it's also not especially engaging. Continuing by way of gems also maintains the player's scores. There are some stats that sort of count as a high score though. The player's highest floor, or wait, is that lower? The, the highest number associated with floors reached, highest number of gems in a playthrough, and highest number of enemies killed are all kept track of. These stats are listed in the top right-hand corner of the elevator phase, and if these records are beaten, they are indicated at the Game Over results screen. Once again, a competitive system for multiplayer compares kills, gems and money collected, and shot impacts between all players involved, ranking each player in the process. But there's not really anything more than that to consider with the scoring to Guns of Mercy. So, how about Guns of Mercy's presentation? Well, for all it features and the way it does so, it's pretty adequate. The Rangers edition differentiates itself from the mobile release mostly with the absence of pay-to-win microtransactions and the addition of four-player multiplayer. Throwbacks to other Storybird games like Finding Teddy are also nice touches, but on the whole, players aren't going to find a ton of mind-blowing content when it comes to the visuals or sound. But, you know, they get the job done, mostly. Guns of Mercy has a pretty good retro-inspired pixel art style that does a good job of standing out. Many of the stages that players will progress through are actually quite cool, and the shimmery, wavy effect applied to them really makes it seem as if the heat of the planet is ever-present as players make it progressively deeper into the underworld. The limited animation on enemies and player characters can kind of be excused given the coolness of some of the backgrounds, though a lot of the bosses players will square off against do have a decent amount of animation to them. The player's guns will rotate through 90 degrees for each direction they point though, which is fine in terms of shot angle accuracy, but also seems just a tad jarring against the pixel art presentation. Granted, we wouldn't have expected an overabundance of unique sprites for every angle, so you know, no harm. Things get a little messier with the sound though. On their own, each individual effect isn't terribly intrusive or offensive, but when the bullets start shooting, the coins start flying, and the treasure starts flowing, the constant din of shots and jingle of coins will become tiresome. 
There are some effects such as the super loud, high-pitched, ultra-piercing noise these exploding baddies trigger when killed that will instantly give players a headache if they're using headphones. The constant sonic barrage is almost literally tiring. When the game ends and the noise dies down, the peace that befalls the player's ears will surely be welcomed. The music is a bit of a mixed bag as well, though some pretty great tracks are included. Marines and Technoloco are a couple of our favorites. Many are merely average, while some fare considerably less well. More tracks are unlocked as bosses are defeated, indicated by a brightly shining cassette tape released by the big chests they leave behind. Players can then change the BGM to these newly acquired tracks during the elevator phase. But the music will only change if the player manually does so. We wish that an auto-cycling or randomized selection existed to change tracks automatically from stage to stage. Meanwhile, the game's central hub is well designed and the interface is well enough implemented when it comes to shops, browsing missions, changing options and so forth. Plenty of cool character designs and neat little touches to the backgrounds exist here. Though outside of the customization available in the shops, there is very little with regards to actual game options. Some minor localization issues make the English language option a little disjointed in places, but it kind of adds charm. So just how does Guns of Mercy Rangers Edition stack up? Let's take a look. As a fixed shooter, Guns of Mercy Rangers Edition feels easy enough to control, but the automatic shooting feels cheap. The dash function feels a little shorter than it ought to be, though. Though pay-to-win microtransactions are gone from this version of the game, players will still be able to boost weapon and character stats way up for a drastic reduction in challenge. Of course, the game does adjust the higher the stage count goes, just not in a genuinely challenging sense. Guns of Mercy Rangers Edition really should have stuck to a lower amount of more challenging stages. With several hundred of them, it overstays its welcome quickly, especially with the kind of grind required to power stuff up. Four-player games might just be where the game's true strength lies. Guns of Mercy has some really cool pixel art backgrounds, neat mechas, and great boss designs. A lot of the enemies are quite a bit less interesting, though. Some of the music tracks are really good, while others suffer, but the soundtrack is decent overall. The sound effects are a little overwhelming though, especially the coin effects. Some enemy deaths are literally painful to listen to. The twin stick twist to the classic fixed shooter gameplay in Guns of Mercy Rangers Edition is pretty cool, but it drags on and gets a little boring along the way, especially with the bosses being recycled so often. The inherent mobile game structure to the stages, upgrades, and progression is pretty boilerplate in the end. The automatic shots don't help. Guns of Mercy Rangers Edition retails for about 30 euros on Pixel Heart's website, but it can also be had on the eShop for just 9 bucks, or less when it's on sale. Despite the lengthy grind and glut of samey stages, its value is still pretty good, especially for those looking for a solid 4-player fixed shooter. Guns of Mercy actually started off pretty solidly, but the grind really got to us in the end. But it's still fun enough to waste some time in, chipping away at stages to get further and further into the game. As a multiplayer game, though, it's much more fun, and the physical edition adds some nice shelf presence to the Switch's shooting library. So in the end, Guns of Mercy Rangers Edition gets a 3.5 out of 5. You can get a copy of Guns of Mercy Rangers Edition for Nintendo Switch on Pixel Hearts website or on the Nintendo eShop today. Well, it looks like we're gonna have to make a detour here because holy cats! Ketsui Death Tiny, uh, Destiny? Deathtiny. Whatever, it's Ketsui. Anyways, this legendary as hell helicopter based cave shooter was finally released in North America to the PlayStation Network on November 20th. We've had the Japanese release for some time now, so there's no time like the present to finally get that review on lockdown. Finally. Then we'll be diving into some extra indies, including Super Psy Penguin and another as yet announced title that we need to test with an episode of Random Play to gauge copyright compliance. We'll see you all in the next episode.